All right, guys, it's Tribox Reviews coming at you guys with American Crime Story Season 2, Episode 4 Review. All right, so I apologize for this one being so late. Um, about like five, four or five, I think four days, um, you know, late for this one. So I apologize for that one. Um, you know, and, uh, I was trying to get it out Thursday and, and then, uh, Friday and then, you know, stuff just came up and, and again, I missed this one live and I, I missed recording it too. So it wasn't even on my, uh, PVR or anything like that. So, um, yeah, is uh you know uh you know stuff happens but anyways i'm um, keeping up with these week to week i want to uh do one each week for for each episode i want to uh you know want to keep going with it so i know that this is late but i'm still going to get it out and uh and you know um you know and even if it you know doesn't get a lot of attention you know and and whatever i still like to have you know the whole collection there i've, I've said this before in some videos but i like to have that whole collection there so when you know someone you know looks at this series maybe next year maybe you know, next month, next week, I don't know, uh, you know, whenever, but then they can come to the channel, you know, and they see the whole playlist, they can watch the reviews and stuff like that, so I just think that's really beneficial, uh, but yeah, this episode this week, another very dark episode, an emotional one too, uh, quite a bit more emotional this week, um, as we got to know the characters a little bit more, the victims, uh, you know, uh, per se, a little bit more um, than last week with Lee Miglin. We learned a little bit about him, but not as much. Um, and we, you know, they didn't, you know, craft that, you know, empathy, you know, to, to feel towards him um, as much as they did in this one. So, yeah, very emotional one here. Um, I honestly thought this one was going to be a different sort of feel to it than last week. But to be honest, it, it was basically just the same. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, it was pretty much just the same thing. Um, so, of course, I'm going to get into a little recap here. Um, try to keep it short. I'm going to try to, you know, just recap and then kind of share my thoughts at the end there. Um, you know, with a rating, fair character, and uh, and all that stuff. More overall thoughts. So, anyways, uh, we start out this one. I uh, apologize for the, the fan noise in the back as well. I'm trying to get that fixed for future videos, but for now, uh, you know, that that's what it is. I, I know that it's not too prevalent, but... Uh, but yeah, so just <laughs> just uh, you know heads up. But anyways, uh, so yeah, we are now seeing uh, one week before Lee Miglin's death um, in this episode, and you know I said last week this again, and it's really ringing true, right? The story is being told completely backwards, right? Each episode going back in time. So the first five minutes of the series, we see um, that Versace is killed, right? We see that, and then we see kind of the aftermath of that. So Versace being killed. Um, you know, it is is kind of you know the the big point in this, and then since then we've just gone backwards, right? And we're learning more about Andrew, you know how you know what what the police did and and all that stuff, right? We're just learning all about that and uh, and his other four murders, of course, too. Which when I first watched this this season, I heard about what it's you know going to be about and stuff. I didn't expect that we'd see the other four, right? I I kind of just thought they'd focus on the Versace one, um, but these last two episodes, I mean, they've literally spent the whole you know, the whole episode on this, and, and in this one, we didn't get any mention of Versace at all, um, like, none, I mean, last episode, at least he went to the store, but this week, nothing, so, yeah, anyway, so in this one, Andrew's living with a man named David, who's a big character in this episode, uh, he's about his age, I'd say, like, I'd say maybe late 20s, mid 20s, something like that, um, but he's living in his apartment loft, uh, there, and, uh, I believe, uh, this is in Minnesota, right, yeah, Minneapolis, um, and, uh, and we see that, like, little video to start the episode, like, Water City or whatever, um, so that was kind of cool, uh, so yeah, and then he begins to act a little weird, um, you know, we kind of get the feeling that it's kind of normal between the two, but then he kind of acts weird, uh, you know, like, like we've seen him before, um, and he kind of, uh, he, he's doing something weird with David's dog, and he goes and watches him in the shower in the bathroom, and we're kind of, like, you know, getting that feeling it's like you know what what is he like what why is he doing these things you know like what's going on um and of course we know that something like something's got to happen here you know we know andrew after you know the last few episodes so basically then he i think he he leaves the dog or something like that and then he tells david that his friend jeff or that their friend jeff uh is downstairs and wants to come up so David goes down, lets him in reluctantly, he doesn't want to go down, but he lets him in, and then when they're uh, going up to his apartment, Jeff tells David that Andrew had stolen his gun, and that he didn't want to see him again, but the only reason, you know, he was back there is for his gun, 
and uh, he kind of he also tells him like he's he's kind of like he's done with Andrew or whatever, right? So interesting, and we and we also know now that the the three of them are all gay, right? Are all gay. Um, so and then we also got a feeling that Jeff and David were actually together, or at least had some sort of feelings for each other, because at one point they say, you know, like, um, does he know about us, right? So obviously we get that there too, and Andrew stealing his gun. I mean, like, you know. Pretty big deal there, for sure. Um, so anyway, so then David opens the door um, to the apartment, goes in, you know, whatever, and uh, and goes to comfort his dog, who's barking, and then suddenly Andrew comes out from the corner and strikes Jeff with a hammer in the head. Um, I mean, Jeff is a much bigger guy than Andrew, so I don't think he was really scared of him, uh, but obviously he didn't expect him to go, you know, at him with a hammer, uh, where he stood no chance. Andrew, you know, he was totally vulnerable at that point, uh, cause he never saw him, right? He never saw him. So, um, yeah, and so Andrew just keeps hitting him in the head over and over and over again. I think they said 23 swings or something, or 22 swings, um, hey, you know, I think David says that, hitting him in the head, uh, until he dies, and I'm, I'm guessing he was dead, like, you know, after the fifth or sixth swing, I would say confidently, uh, so he kept going, um, and this is all in front of David, who we now know, who had feelings for Jeff, and, and or at least they were friends, right, so, you know, pretty big deal, and, and he obviously looks traumatized, I mean, he's kind of shaking or whatever, and then this was a really chilling scene where Andrew just is done with it and he has the bloody hammer in his hand and he goes over to David to comfort him with the bloody hammer up against his face and he's like holding him like that. It's like, you know, like, it, like why, you know, like why were you holding the bloody hammer on his face? It's like, you know, just crazy stuff there and, uh, and really chilling too, right, to see that. Um, so then we see David and Andrew, uh, they're showering the blood off of themselves, because, you know, they're covered, right? You know, so is the apartment floor as well. Um, so then David wants Andrew to call the police and confess to what had happened, right? You know, he, he just wants him to, to come clean and, you know, work this all out. He's not, you know, he, I guess he's, like, caring more about that than the actual, like, Jeff's dead body in his apartment. <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird, but, um, anyway, so then Andrew convinces him that he will serve time, he's going to be in trouble too, because he was in the apartment, you know, valid points, right, he probably will be, um, and, uh, and yeah, so just for being there, he could serve all this time, so he hangs up the 911 call, because, you know, obviously he doesn't want that, and I think he mentions his dad too, that his dad would, um, you know, um, you know, he, he would care and all that, and then he would get in trouble with his dad and all that, um, so again, though, I'd like to point out, another hung up 911 call so in episode two that old guy he had 911 dialed because he was phoning because andrew you know he did that tape on the face thing to him um on the bed he was calling 911 he hung up and now we see again david's you know on 911 they answer and he hangs up as well and if you really think about it here either one of those 911 calls if they said you know just a couple words maybe this guy wouldn't have killed versace Maybe he wouldn't have gotten away with all the stuff he did. So crazy stuff there to think about, uh, to think about stuff like that, right? You know, what could a one call or even like two words, you know, like help me or something like that um, could have done. So crazy stuff. And then Andrew locks David in the bedroom uh, and won't let him leave. Uh, so, you're right, so he doesn't trust David, he thinks that David's gonna go to the cops or whatever, and obviously, you know, he doesn't want that, so he locks him in the bedroom, um, and then it was really, you know, kind of creepy when, uh, he's, he looks like he's asleep on the floor, and you're like, no, hey, <laughs> you know, like, he's not asleep, there's no way, David, David tries to leave the room, but Andrew wakes up, of course, you know, right when he's trying to leave, and, but David tells him that he has to walk the dog, it was actually a good cover, um, you know, thinking on his feet there, he has to go walk the dog, but with Jeff's dead body in the middle of the doorway, you know, they can't get out to walk the dog, and, you know, they kind of have to face, you know, what, what has happened, and Andrew doesn't even seem too phased by it, uh, David's still, like, I think in shock mainly, so that's why he's not, you know, in tears or whatever, right, um, but, you know, he's in shock, and Andrew just kind of, you know, seems like oblivious to it, you know, to be honest, um, so he decides to clear it, um, and he puts a, a, a you know, a, yeah, he puts a Jeff in a rug, he rolls him up in a rug, and then puts him behind the couch, and they push the sofa back, so he's kind of, you know, hidden behind the couch at first glance, um, and then the two go out and walk the dog, so, uh, crazy stuff, and I mean, you know, 
you're uh, you're that lady, you know, the witness, right? The the witness that they interview later in the episode, and it's like, you know, you're the imagine you're that lady. You see these two guys walking down the street in a you know with their dog and whatever. They look nice, you know. They they you know they're kind of obviously faking it, you know. And these two guys just you know killed someone in their apartment, uh, you know, or I guess one of them did, right? But one of them was witness to it, so. Um, and at this point, it, David is a criminal, right? Because he's not reporting, um, you know, the uh, the actual act, right? So that makes him a criminal. So they're both criminals right now. And, uh, you know, and, and a lot of fairness, you know, goes to David, right? I mean, how could he report? He was locked in the bedroom and all that. Yeah, you know, that's totally understandable. Uh, so, yeah, just in my head, like, I can't imagine, you know, they're just walking the dog, you know, in the, in the middle of the city there. And, you know, it's it's a good day and whatever. Um, and meanwhile, they got this dead body and a rug rolled up in their apartment. So crazy stuff there. Uh, and then when they come back from walking, a co-worker and the building manager uh, come and they knock on the door after they hear the dog barking for a while. And I'm not exactly sure why the dog was barking because both of them were there and kind of taking care of them. So I'm not exactly sure what happened there. I, maybe I missed that part. Anyway, so the dog's barking. I think he's hungry or something. Uh, so then Andrew tells David that they need to leave right? They, he, he tells David, you know, you don't want to be here for this. David's about to answer the door, but he convinces him otherwise. So they go on the run together in the red truck. And again, we see this truck at Lee Miglin's place last episode. So we know that, you know, that's the truck that uh, Andrew drives to uh, Lee Miglin's place uh, before he kills him. So uh, crazy stuff with all the vehicles connecting, right? You see all these connections going, and I really like that, the way they're kind of using the vehicles um, to do that. And I'm sure I'm sure those are true facts, right? He, he did steal all the vehicles. Um, but I just like the way that the show has done it with the way they're telling the story, for sure. Um, so then the woman, uh, or the, the women get inside and see the crime scene after uh, the, the manager opens the door. So they call the cops, and the investigators come. Um, I believe, uh, what were they, Detective... Titich, Titich, and, um, I don't remember the other guy, uh, damn, but anyways, the two detectives come, or the investigators, uh, come, and they begin to break down the scene, you know, it, you know, it's whatever, you know, kind of just seems like normal, uh, status quo, but they have some false facts, right, so, originally, they believe that David is the one in the carpet that is the victim, right, but then, they see that the, uh, so they ask, um, the co-worker, you know, what color is, is his hair? And she says blonde. And it's like, you know, like, that's pretty crazy, right? You know, the guy's hair is not blonde, uh, right? They look in the carpet, obviously. It's black. Um, and then the, the worker says that Andrew Cunanan was... I, I love the way, too, that they mispronounce his last name. Almost everyone in the whole show has mispronounced his last name. And I just feel like that speaks volumes to it as well. I mean, this guy's a, a serial killer, and you, you you can't even pronounce his name right, you know, that just kind of, you know, goes with it, it's like, you know, obviously at this point they don't know that, this was his first murder, right, but anyways, uh, just further on as well, uh, but anyways, yeah, so they figured that it is Andrew Cunanan, uh, in, you know, uh, instead of David, uh, you know, they think that David is actually the criminal, and Andrew is the victim, so David killed this guy, right, so, uh, they, you know, totally reverses, right, so he's not the victim anymore, and that means that they were illegally in the apartment, so, you know, kind of interesting there, and Detective Tittich makes a, a good call here, uh, because he wants to get a search warrant before they come back, so the case doesn't fall apart, so they have to pretend like they left everything as it is, even though no one's coming back there, um, and leave, right, with the, to come back with a search warrant, and by the way, Detective Tittich, he was in Breaking Bad, I noticed him right away, um, he was Hank's boss in Breaking Bad, um, and, uh, as you can see, uh, my, my favorite all-time show on, uh, television, so yeah, and then, um, yeah, so then, of course, they come back a little bit later, um, you know, Detective Tittich and the, and the other detective there, uh, they take the body, and they find out it's neither Andrew or David at the, at the coroner's office here, but instead, Jeff, which we knew, obviously, but now they're kind of finding that out, and they're like, you know, who's this Jeff guy, right, so, it, just everything is, is kind of messed up here right now with the story, um, so now they believe that David and Andrew did it together, right, so they, they think that they're both criminals here, which, to an extent, is true, right, like I said, David is a criminal right now, because he hasn't reported the crime, but Andrew is the guy who physically, you know, hit, you know, hit him, and, and struck him until, you know, he was dead, so, 
Then the detectives go to David's parents to tell them. Um, and at this point, I felt like this is when they really built the David character up and really got us uh, feeling that emotional attachment to him. Um, and that's what really made this episode even more emotional towards the end. Um, so we see flashbacks of David and his father when he was younger. Um, you know, and, and they went hunting and stuff like that. Um, and then also him telling his father that he was gay uh, when he was graduating university. And obviously we see that, you know, kind of effect. And that's a kind of a um, underlying theme in the whole show is uh, is you know the like coming out and uh, and being you know isolated and and uh, you know from society and all that. That's a that's a really you know underlying theme in the whole show with uh, uh, you know all the, all pretty much Andrew all the all the men he meets all kind of have that same vibe, right? You know they're they're kind of you know in the closet per se still. Um, and they don't want to get out, right? So that's, uh, you know, uh, definitely have to mention that for sure. Um, and then we see Andrew and him on the road together, um, you know, and, and this is, is just really sad because we know that David doesn't want to be there. Um, and Andrew's, you know, kind of dragging him along. Although David, you know, what option does he have? He goes back, he's probably going to prison, right? So, you know, so they stop at a lounge then, and this was a big scene. So uh, they get at the lounge, they get a table, and David, you know, goes to the washroom, right? And so at this point in the washroom, he breaks the window to escape. And you're like, you know, yes, like he's finally getting away from Andrew. He's, you know, he can get away. He can get to freedom. Andrew's not going to be able to find him. You know, they're in a city environment. That was the perfect escape. But then a couple seconds later, we see him. He decides to stay. Now, the question that I have, though, is could he have really fit through the window I don't know, it was a pretty small window, so I don't know, maybe that came down to it too, maybe he actually tried to get out and he couldn't, like, I don't know, but I find, I kind of saw it as, uh, he decided to stay instead of, instead of go, um, which obviously should have left, right, he should have, he should have left, and obviously at the end of the episode, we know, you know, that, uh, that maybe that was his only chance, so tough to watch, really, right, you know, thinking back to that scene, um, and you know what happens, it's, you know, just tough to, tough to watch him, and how he's, how he's trapped, right, he really has nowhere to go, um, so then we see, uh, that when he's gone, we see Andrew get really emotional, and that was kind of a, a, a weird turn as well, because we haven't really seen that before, and I'm wondering, maybe is it about David, maybe that he actually has these, you know, strong feelings for David, I don't know, like, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, uh, take a, you know, take a, you know, a step in his shoes and whatever, uh, for Andrew and get in his mind, but maybe that's kind of what I'm guessing, but he gets really emotional, starts uh, even crying a little bit, but when David comes back, he seems okay, and he kind of smiles and grins again, so anyways, uh, really, uh, really, you know, you know, different, uh, you know, scene there, uh, but still an important one in the episode. So then we get this, uh, you know, the end of the episode here, and uh, and this is tough, you know. This was, you know, the the emotional part of the episode. So all this stuff is kind of building up, right? That that whole scene in the lounge, we kind of see, you know, <clears throat> David decides to stay instead of escape. So we know that, you know, he's being controlled now, and and you know, he he doesn't really, you know, have many options. He's kind of trapped, you know, in a sense, and. Everything starts to fall apart, basically, right? When Andrew and David um, are having breakfast at this restaurant, right? And uh, and David finally exposes Andrew and confronts him because now he's figured it out as well. Um, you know, and he, he talks about Jeff finding out. Well, he's, you know, also started to figure this out. Um, even though he's been living with the guy, I think he was there for the weekend, but they've lived together before, they said. So, you know, he's been living with this guy this long and he's kind of just figured this out. It's kind of, you know, strange to me, but... You know, it's, I guess, you know, he's, Andrew's good at hiding it. Uh, but anyway, so David, you know, starts talking about the night they met, how good it was, and, you know, he's he, it's all fake, right? He's, he's being so fake in this, um, you know, how good it was and, and all this stuff about, you know, Andrew being in the big suite and whatever. Um, and then I have uh, basically the whole thing of dialogue here, um, which I thought was honestly the most important dialogue in the whole, um, in the whole season. Uh, I think, I think it will be, because I think it really describes, um, you know, what Andrew is all about and what's going on, um, so I, yeah, so I'm just gonna, uh, read kind of the lines back and forth, so David says then, you know, oh, I thought, how hard do I have to work, uh, to work, yeah, how hard do I have to work to live like him, like Andrew, um, except, uh, sorry, this is still Dave, except it was all a lie, you've never worked for anything, it was an act, and then he says, um, yeah, and then he gets to this point. Is that why you killed Jeff? 
you loved him. It was so obvious. So then we, we also get that. So Andrew was in love with, with Jeff as well. But obviously Jeff uh, and Avdi in the same way. Um, you, you loved him. It was so obvious. But he figured you out in the end, didn't he? He finally saw the real you and you killed him for it. So crazy stuff, right? I mean, that's, like I said, one of the most pivotal scenes in the season so far. Perfectly explains what Andrew does and how he acts. And David has finally figured it out. And, like, again, I ask, like, how has it taken this long? But anyways, uh, you know, uh, Andrew's, I guess, you know, really good. But anyways, uh, he finally figures it out. And he, he's, he's kind of putting things together. And it's like, you know, Andrew, you know, is faking it. He, you know, puts it all on an act. And he says, you know, he says, uh, you never worked for anything. It was an act, you know. You know, it always is an act with you, right? So he acts and acts and acts and does all this stuff. He loves Jeff. You know, tells him all this stuff. And Jeff finally figures out that he's... It is an act. He's fake. You know, he's not... You know, he, he's not who he says he is. He's not a rich guy. He's just a normal guy. You know, and that's... You know, he's, he's a sociopath pretty much, right? I mean, that's kind of what Jeff figures out. And because of that, Andrew's heartbroken. Jeff doesn't want to be with him anymore. So he kills him. You know, so it, it's just crazy stuff. And I thought this uh, these lines really did that. Um, and then Andrew... You see this again, and it's like, it's it's actually kind of pathetic watching it, because now you're like, okay, this is ridiculous. But you also see the deception that Andrew is able to get to, like, that he's able to do. So, then, Andrew, even after David says these things, he tries telling him that they can be movie stars from L.A. when they get to Mexico, and live like royalty, they can be rich and all this, and it's like... This guy has figured you out like it's too late, Andrew. And he just keeps going with this, spinning these stories and all this stuff. And, and David doesn't fall for it, you know, thankfully. David doesn't fall for it. He's, he's definitely, you know, out of it. He's not falling for it. And then another pivotal, pivotal line here, a little back and forth. David says, you just can't do it, can you? And then Andrew said, you know, do what? And he's, he's, you know, starting to get a little bit, you know, ang aggravated here because he realized that David's trying to, you know, kind of figure him out here slowly. And Andrew, you know, says, do what? And David says, stop. And it's, it's so true, right? He just can't stop acting. He doesn't even know the real him. The, the, you know, the real, you know, Andrew Cunan, and he, because he's told all these stories and all this, and we see this again, um, in episode, uh, was it two? Episode two, where he's at the bar, and he tells the guy, you know, oh, I'm a pineapple farmer, uh, I'm a, um, and he named off all these things, and then at the very end, he's like, I'm a serial killer, and it's like, yeah, you know, you are all those things, and, and never did he mention the real thing, you know, what he really was, so, crazy stuff, right? And I mean, David's so true. He just can't stop. He always is putting on this act, and when people find him out, he kills them, pretty much, right? So, then at this point, we know it's basically over for David, right? And he probably knows that, too. After saying these things, um, you know, he, he knows. He knows that Andrew is, is obviously, can't let him, you know, just run off, basically, because David's now going to tell people and Andrew doesn't want to be caught yet, obviously. Uh, so uh, he has he has other plans with Lee Miglin. Um, so yeah, so we kind of have that feeling that David, um, it's pretty much over for him. But that doesn't really help uh, the emotional side of this one. So he keeps confronting Andrew in the truck. He says he doesn't. Andrew says he doesn't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it and all this stuff. And then David tries to take control of the truck from Andrew, um, and then, you know, and, and when he's doing this, Andrew is able to pull over into a farm field, and then, you know, you kind of just get the, get the, um, you know, the feeling that it's the end for David, right, he pulls in this farm field, uh, secluded, off the road, no one can hear or see, you know, what's going on, and, uh, and, you know, and then we, we kind of know, and then Andrew says, you know, over and over again, you know, we had a plan, David, you know, we could have just followed the plan and whatever, and, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, you had a plan, but it wasn't real. And David says that a little bit later, too. He says, you know, it's not real. You know, it, it's not worth, it's not a plan, because it, it's not real. It's all fake. You know, it's it's what you want and all that. David obviously doesn't, you know, want to go to Mexico and be movie stars from L.A., right? Like, it's just, you know, crazy. So, David kind of realizes that um, at this point, Andrew is going to kill him. Um, so, he does start pleading for his life on his knees. Um, you know, in the field there, and he pretends to agree with Andrew about the life that they can have in Mexico, and all this stuff, you know, keeps, you know, faking it, and saying, you know, he feels the same way, 
and all the stuff. Obviously, we know he doesn't. Um, but Andrew doesn't believe him. Uh, and then at this point, he holds him at gunpoint. He gets out his gun. He's shooting it at, or uh, pointing it at him. Sorry. Um, and David, you know, he gets to a point and he finally just gives up, right? And he, if he went with that, I feel like he probably could have convinced Andrew and he would have been alive. But he just gives up, right? He's tired of it and he tells him it's over. They need to go to the police. You know, we're not going to Mexico. We're not being movie stars from L.A. It's over, right? And, and you know, he says, you know, we need to go to police and whatever. So then Andrew ends up lowering his gun because I think he's actually feeling the emotional, you know, aspect of this because he does have feelings for David, right, in the end. So David, you know, takes his chance and tries running away uh, right from Andrew. And then this was probably the most emotional part of the episode here. Uh, we see him make it to the uh, small trailer there, opens the door, closes it, locks, and we're like, you know, okay, he, like, he got away, apparently, right, uh, but then once we see, uh, his dad, right, he sees his father, and he's holding out that, that cup of coffee again, and, and, you know, at that point, we know it, it's not real, right, he, he's imagining this, and, you know, that's not actually, you know, real, that's not reality, um, and, uh, and then we see the real, you know, and then we see what really happened, and, uh, we know David didn't make it to the trailer, uh, we see Andrew, uh, hits David with one of the bullets before he gets there, um, but he is still alive, he's still alive at this point, but he gets hit in the back, um, by one of these bullets, and then we see, um, finally, then, you know, then Andrew stands over him, um, and this was even more emotional, I mean, this was like, David, you know, has his hands up even, and he's still, you know, pleading, you know, saying, you know, don't, don't shoot me and whatever, and then Andrew, you know, without any, you know, any emotion or whatever, just shoots him, uh, in the head there, and, uh, finally ends his life, um, ends his suffering, though, I would say, because he probably would have bled out there on the ground, um, and, uh, and for him, you know, to just kind of shoot him, shoot him in the head, I guess, um, kind of ended his suffering there, so, anyways, you know, I guess there's two, two sides of the coin to look at there, um, but yeah, and then, this was, like, the most, you know, over the top, you know, kind of chilling, uh, scene in this, it's like, yeah, okay, he kills him, very emotional, and then we see him laying with his dead body, you know, and, and it has his arm around him, and it's, it's, it's really gruesome, too, with his eye being shot out, like, he's just totally missing an eye in the eye socket, and it's like, you know, it's pretty, pretty gruesome stuff, and I made this point last week, but I don't think you're seeing this on any, uh, network television, this is FX, right, uh, so, you, you know, you kind of, you can kind of expect that, but, yeah, just crazy, like, he's laying with his dead body, you know, crazy stuff, and then, and then we see him being emotional about it, it's like, well, then why'd you kill him, <laughs> like, you know, and he's, he's, you know, really sad, and he wants to lay with him and everything, and it's like, you know, you just killed him, right, so, crazy stuff, really emotional, honestly, I'm, you know, I, it's just really emotional, they, they build up all this empathy, they build this character, and then we see him die in the end, which we kind of knew, we kind of expected that he was going to die from the beginning, um, but yeah, so then, yeah, maybe Andrew did really have feelings for him, right, I think he did, I think in the end, he kind of did, and, uh, he always see, I don't want to say he regrets his decision to kill him, but, you know, he, he kind of, uh, you know, is thinking about it a little bit more, um, and then, yeah, and then he leaves his body there, um, gets in his truck, and leaves, and he's off to kill Lee Miglin, right, um, that's the way these episodes are going, right, it's, it's completely backwards, so, um, we're kind of seeing, uh, episode 9 to 1, <laughs> sort of thing, um, but anyway, so, yeah, off to kill, off to kill Lee Miglin, and, uh, and off to Chicago, so that's just about the recap, just about the episode, now just quickly, uh, again, my ratings, fair character, and some overall thoughts. Alright, so in terms of a rating for this episode, I'm going to give it one point better than last week. I'll give it a 4.4 out of 5. Again, another dark and grim episode this week, right? Um, you know, really, really... And this one, again, was more emotional. I said that at the beginning, but more emotional. They really built um, up this David character a lot more than the Lee Miglin character. And we really felt that empathy towards them uh, a little bit more. And that's what made it so emotional. Um, reveals more things, but not all things, right? So it's, you know, just giving us, you know, enough here and, and kind of telling us, you know, how did, you know, Andrew gets to this point, to this point. And this one was kind of another episode that just kind of showed us how we got to uh, to Lee in this case and just Chicago. So, um, yeah, crazy stuff. And then this one, again, it's like, you know, there was no mention of Versace at all in the whole episode. Like I said, last week, at least he went to the store. This week, there was no mention of Versace at all. Um, and honestly... I, you know, I like this. I like that they're building the character with Andrew, but it is the assassination of Johnny Versace. Like, we haven't seen Penelope Cruz uh, and uh, and Ricky Martin, for example, 
for last two episodes, and we didn't see much of them in episode two either. So it's like, you know, yeah, I understand the whole background of it and all that, but maybe piece together some current time stuff in here, you know? Show show the actual Versace stuff, and I think that we're going to get back to that next week. I haven't looked at any of the previews or anything, but next week I think we're going to get back to that, but I don't know. I just feel like if it's going to be about Versace, I get the background development, I get all that, but it's you got to have something about Versace in the episode. Um, this just felt like a totally different show, to be honest, in this episode. Not that that, you know, means it's necessarily negative, just means it's totally different, right? So... That's just my opinion on that. I'm sure other people, you know, will have a different opinion. But again, like I said, last season with OJ Simpson, yes, I know it's a different case and all that. You know, yes, he wasn't a serial killer. Uh, you know, it was just kind of a, a one event. Um, but that, you know, that was about OJ all 10 episodes. All 10 episodes were about OJ and, and what happened. So, um, yeah, just a little bit different this season. I wasn't expecting it. So, um, that's, you know, that's kind of it there. Uh, fair character for this one is uh, going to be David Matson, uh, David, right, in the episode. And, uh, yeah, really great character. Um, I honestly liked it. Uh, I liked the way they developed it, like I said. Built that empathy up so we actually felt for him. A lot of shows, you know, they, they tend to, you know, just put them in more scenes. And they think, oh, you know, like, you know, they have more lines this episode. So the audience is going to, you know, feel for them when they when we kill them off. You know, Walking Dead's kind of uh, bad with that, I feel like, sometimes. But, no, this one, they really built it. We, sh we, we saw the flashbacks of him as a child and, and all that stuff. The effects on him with, with being gay. So... Crazy stuff. I really like the way they built up this character. Uh, they had um, um, uh, what was her were her name um, last last week? Uh, Marilyn, Marilyn Miglin last week, and then David Matson this week, um, and just crazy. And I they're obviously not going to be in another episode in the series, um, but really good you know spotlight standout uh, you know characters there. And then, and he's played by Cody Fern. And I like I'm I'm watching the episode and I'm like this guy looks so familiar. I bet he's been in a bunch of other stuff. But he hasn't been in anything, really. I mean, I think he was in one show for, I think, five episodes or something as a recurring character. And that's it. Like, on his IMDb, like, his history. Like, he's literally done this and that. And it's like, that's it. So, I don't know. He looks really, really familiar, though. Uh, so, maybe he, you know, has some relative. I don't know. But, yeah. So, he looked really familiar. He looks like he's been in other stuff. But, anyways, he did a great job. I mean, this is, like, basically his second project. And he, you know, is, is this good? I thought he was very good. Um, for hit for there so really great stuff there um, and uh, and yeah so I thought he was a really great character for this episode um, Jeff was also played by uh, by an, uh, the actor uh, that I've seen in many different roles um, well I shouldn't say many but a few other roles um, so he was good too and uh, obviously Darren Chris I mean I'm telling you if he doesn't win an Emmy for this I, I don't know. I don't know. There's got to be some, you know, fierce competition for him not to. He's doing such an amazing job. I can't say enough about it. Um, you know, there's not one, you know, frame where I don't believe, you know, his portrayal of Andrew. It's just it's just amazing. So, anyways, guys, that will just about do it for this review. I apologize for it being a little lengthy again. I'm trying to get these down, but uh, with the, with the in-depth recaps, it's just, uh, just a little hard. But, anyways, next week... I'm hoping to be back, or I guess three days from now. I'm hoping to be back on Thursday, if not Friday, uh, for the review for this one. And, uh, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. Yeah, you know, I have some negative things to say, but overall, one of my favorite uh, seasons this year, and I'm really looking forward to next episode. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support on my videos, and I'll see you next week for American Crime Story, Season 2, Episode 5. <laughs>